and welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over what is involved in the AP Latin syllabus to give you an idea of the work you have in store for you. Over the course of the year, you're going to be reading excerpts from Virgil's Aeneid and Caesar's De Bello Gallico, or About the Gallic War. Virgil's Aeneid takes place in Troy, Carthage, and eventually in Italy. Whereas the Gallic Wars, as the name suggests, take place in Gaul with a short foray over into Britain. The Aeneid was written by Virgil, and he lived from 70 BCE to 19 BCE. Um, De Bello Gallico was written by Julius Caesar. Um, he was born in 100 BCE and died in 44 BCE on the Ides of March. Um, the, Aene the Aeneid is an example of epic poetry, um, and it, it was written from 29 to 19 BCE. In fact, it wasn't finished when Virgil died. And uh, De Bello Gallico is a military commentary, kind of dispatches from the front, and it was at, actually written during the Gallic Wars as they were happening um, between 58 BCE and 49 BCE. Over the course of the year, you're going to read 833 lines of Virgil's Aeneid and 49 chapters of De Bello Gallico. As you can see, that's a lot of words. And when you look at the total, um, I put this up there not to intimidate you, but just to remind you that um, the AP Latin course is a serious Latin course. It's one that you should be proud that you're taking. Um, it is similar to a fifth semester college course. It isn't an intro college course. Um, and I will help you every step of the way to get through it, um, but we're going to be covering a lot of material. I want to give you an overview of um, the subject matter of the texts in the AP syllabus. And in the slide that's about to begin, the texts that have a cream background, that's the Aeneid. And those that have the more teal blue green background are from Caesar's Gallic Wars. So we're going to start with book one of the Aeneid, and um, most of that takes place um, after the introduction with Aeneas and his men um, sailing from Troy. They've been sailing for quite some time, and um, due to some machinations of the gods, they end up being blown off course into Carthage, where Aeneas is going to meet Queen Dido, and the Trojans are going to settle for a while to recuperate. Um, Book one of De Bello Gallico starts with the um, famous words, all Gaul is divided into three parts, and it gives a quick introduction to Gaul, and then is going to talk about a conspiracy by a um, Gallic chieftain, um, what happens with that, and um, this part ends with basically Caesar's justification for why he decided to invade Gaul in the first place. We will also read um, a segment of book six of De Bello Gallico in which uh, Caesar discusses some of the customs and uh, mores of the Gauls and dives especially into the practices of the Druids um, and some of the beliefs of the Gauls and how they are similar to and different from those of the Romans. Um, book two of the Aeneid is actually a flashback to the end of the Trojan War. Um, funnily enough, uh, the Trojan horse does not show up on either the Iliad or the Odyssey, but it does show up in the Aeneid. And so this is um, actually Aeneas narrating the tale of the Trojan War to Dido and the Carthaginians. Um, and there's lots of blood and battle and mayhem. And then we find out why it is that Aeneas and his men have left and where they're going. Book four of De Bello Gallico um, takes place as the Romans decide to cross over into Britain for not necessarily an invasion, according to Caesar, more kind of a reconnaissance trip, and the difficulties that the Romans have landing in Britain and then um, gaining a foothold. Um, there are battle scenes, there are some negotiations. Um, and we see Caesar kind of in action more than he did in book one. Um, book four of the Aeneid is um, a tragic tale where um, Aeneas and Dido actually end up somewhat um, establishing a relationship that Dido at least thinks of as a marriage, and then um, the book continues to show the 
dissolution of their relationship with the um, eventual suicide of Dido. Um, book five of Caesar's Gallic Wars um, takes place in the northeast corner of Gaul up in the Belgian area and it is um, a part of the text where the Roman um, troops have set up for winter camps. They didn't use they didn't usually fight during the winter. Um, and there is a rebellion of some of the tribes of that region of Gaul. So um, Caesar does not play a huge role in this, but um, it is an interesting um, exploration of leadership styles and shows both failures and successes of the Roman troops. And then finally, book six of the Aeneid um, takes place in the underworld before Aeneas can fulfill his destiny of landing in Italy and founding the uh, foothold that will become eventually Rome. He must travel down to the underworld, and so that is the last segment of the um, text of the Aeneid that we will read. He crosses the Styx, he visits some heroes, he meets Dido, Kerberos is in there, um, Charon, the ferryman, um, and there's a brief history of a brief prophecy about what the future of Rome has in store. The College Board has identified seven themes that you can trace throughout both the Aeneid and De Bello Gallico. Um, the first is literary style and genre. Um, as I said, the Aeneid is an epic poem written in dactylic hexameter. Um, Caesar's work is a military commentary that he um, composed in segments to be sent back to Rome to report back on what he was doing. Um, the second is Roman values. We're going to learn a lot about you know, the establishment of Roman values in the Aeneid as um, Aeneas is traveling from Troy in order to find a foothold in Italy. And in Caesar's uh, Gallic Wars, we'll learn about you know, the values that Caesar valued as Romans and um, the contrast with the non-Romans. Um, we'll talk about war and peace. Both are front and center in both works. Um, Leadership is a big theme, um, identifying you know, where Aeneas and Caesar seem to be strong leaders and where maybe they do not seem to be very strong and why they are lacking and why the authors chose to portray them that way. Um, views of non-Romans, uh, a, a good, good portion of the segments of the Aeneid that we're going to read take place in Troy. Um, and the depiction of the Greeks, and then also um, in Carthage and the depiction of the Carthaginians um, and the other African uh, chieftains in the surrounding area. Um, history and memory, both um, Virgil and Caesar depict their characters looking back in time and basing decisions on what has happened in the past. And then finally, human and the gods. Um, in the Aeneid, obviously, the gods play a huge role um, in De Bello Gallico, they don't play as huge a role, but in the book six segments of the um, Gallic Wars, uh, Caesar does talk about um, the divinities that the Gauls worshipped and compares that to um, the Roman divinities.